I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Immigration. The immigration reform bill passing the Senate hurdle, moving to the House of Representatives. The road ahead, however, is wobbly. It's cluttered with obstacles. It is not a defeat the way it was in 2006. It is, however, a mixed picture. And I welcome Clint Bullock, a research fellow at the Hoover Institution, who, with uh, Governor Jeb Bush of Florida, former governor, have published Immigration Wars, Forging an American Solution, just published. Uh, Clint, in uh, the former governor, our author of a piece recently published in the Wall Street Journal about the strengths of immigration reform, what is to be done as it moves to the House of Representatives. Clint is the vice president for litigation at the Goldwater Institute as well. Clint, a very good evening to you. The road ahead I tell no one news that it's troubled in the House of Representatives, but right now it is my opinion, my information, that it is not clear that the House won't uh, embrace parts of the immigration reform from the Senate, write its own version, and that things can be worked out in conference. Is that your information as well, Clint, that this is not a defeated bill? There are moments here uh, that there is hope. Good evening to you, Clint. Good evening to you as well, John, and you're absolutely right. It's going to be an uphill bill, uh, uphill battle to get a bill through the House. The main reason for that is that the House is invoking a rule that requires that any bill that comes to the floor has to have a majority of Republican support. The bill in the Senate did not get a majority of Republicans. So uh, I think if we see anything coming out of the House, and I certainly hope we do, it will look different from the Senate bill and it will have to have a majority of Republican support. Before we speak of uh, the reason we need immigration reform, what it will do for the economy, I want to get into some of the the language here because it's very specific to the immigration bill, the immigration policies we have now, and what needs to be uh, improved. Clint, what is family preference? What does that mean for immigration? Well, a lot of people don't realize that our, under our current system, every year 650,000 family members of existing immigrants and legal residents come in legally, and they get on the path to citizenship. That's because in the 1960s we switched from a work-based immigration system, which is what other countries have, to a family-based system, and we allow preferences not just for spouses and for minor children, which I think everyone would agree with, but also for parents and for siblings, and then they in turn get preferences as well. So two-thirds of our legal immigrants every year come not for work or, in fact, only 13 percent come for work purposes, but rather because of family preferences. And these are not always productive working immigrants. Many of them are elderly or very young and consume a lot of social services. So if we do not get immigration reform through Congress, that is the system that we are stuck with and it is an absolute disaster. How does that compare to other our competition, other developed nations? It compares horribly. Canada, for example, gives has one-tenth of our population, but gives more high-skilled visas every year than the United States does. As a result, a lot of companies are moving their facilities out of the United States and into co- uh, countries like Canada, New Zealand. Chile now has a part of the country called Chilicon Valley, and that is because they are attracting uh, startup businesses and they're bringing in high-skilled immigrants to perform the work that uh, that we don't have immigrants to, to do because of our crazy immigration system. Now, part of the immigration reform bill that I understand in the Senate addresses this. This is the H-1B visa detail. 65000 is the cap now. There are proposals to raise that cap. I believe there are also proposals to make it possible to come here, study at university, stay here and work, but not become a citizen. In other words, you're given a way to work for America, but not have to go back to your country before you apply. Is that all correct, Clint? That's right. Right Right now, we train hundreds of thousands of highly skilled uh, immigrants in our universities, and then they have to return home or go to other countries. That is, you know, we should not be training engineers 
to send them to China. And that's exactly what we're doing now because of our misguided immigration system. And again, if the House of Representatives defeats immigration reform, we will continue to have that dysfunctional immigration system. The I want to boost now immigration. What will the immigration reform do for our GDP? What will, what will it do for right, right now what we understand to be our biggest burden, which is the debt we've piled up? Well, uh, right now we're facing a, a, a very bad situation where the number of people collecting retirement is increasing dramatically as the number of people supporting them and paying into the system is actually going down. So we need young, productive people in their early er earning years who will contribute to the system. We're not... Uh, producing those young people through births in adequate numbers and so we need to bring them in through immigration now what the immigration bill would do would be to restore the type of immigration system we used to have which was a work-based system and shift the proportions of people coming in for work uh, to a majority of immigrants rather than the tiny percentage of immigrants right now. That in turn will boost our gross domestic product substantially and also help us uh, support our retirees by adding people to the workforce. Uh, the concern in the House also, of course, we're not speaking directly to border security. That matter is uh, mandated by the Senate bill, and I believe, from what I've heard from the South, will, uh, uh, the House will be mandated as there. We're talking about growth and growth in America. My understanding of what's wrong right now is that we don't have enough people forming families in the productive years. And by, my, by enough people, I mean to generate four percent growth indefinitely because of the burden of the of the entitlements that we know are coming in the rest of this century can we do these do these um, immigration bills do they shape immigration so that we would uh, welcome people in their 20s and 30s from other uh, nations with skills is it that specific yes and it does so by essentially uh, dramatically reducing the number of family preference visas right and increasing the number of work-based fees. So we're not actually changing the number, we're changing the focus. That's exactly right, and that's, that's long overdue. A lot of other countries are cleaning our clock right now in, uh, in adjusting their immigration system, and we need to get uh, back to the type of immigration system that most people think we have. Right. But we have not had for now, Clint. Long. We just have thirty seconds right now. If nothing happens in the House, we keep the immigrant, the status quo we have now, which is this uh, completely woeful, out of date immigration uh, system. Correct? That's right, and it is one because it has too few work opportunities. Right. Causes illegal immigration. So doing nothing is the worst alternative. That is exactly right. Clint Bolick is the Vice President for Litigation at the Goldwater Institute. There's much more to say about immigration reform, but it's very difficult to argue against the idea that we have a system now that does not serve the purposes of the people here or of the growth for the United States, the growth we need. Uh, Clint is also a research fellow at the Hoover Institution, writing most recently in the Wall Street Journal with former Governor Jeb Bush of Florida. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.